Hi, welcome to Pediatric Echo for the Adult Tech. This one is called Your First Echo by Scott Moss. We'll get started right now. What to do, or I'm sorry, what do you take on your first trip? If possible, a pediatric echo tech or a pediatric cardiologist. Going to the nursery or the NICU, you need sterile gel. This is a new rule I really don't understand. There's nothing sterile about a baby. Um, warm gel is important. Um, this will stop the baby from jumping out of the crib. So if you can find a way to warm the gel up, that would be great. Um, any reference cards or a good book such as Terry Reynolds' Pediatric Echo Book, um, which I find fantastic and a great reference. This may help you define the defect you're looking at. Uh, most important of all, bring your patience. Be calm. You'll get through this. Are you ready? You have to be ready. This is what you may see. This is a baby about maybe two pounds, something of that nature. Obviously on a ventilator, lots of tubes and wires coming out. Um, you'll have to reach through an incubator. Um, you'll probably be in a position you don't want to be in. And it will be very difficult to do this echo. But you have to figure out what's going on with this baby so it's necessary. Getting to the room without hurting yourself. Push the machine instead of pulling it. Avoid pushing the machine on carpeting if you can. Be careful going in and out of elevators. They have a tendency to not level off all the time, and uh, that means you're, you feel like you're pushing the machine up a curb. That's not good for your back. Trying to get as close to the crib or bed with the machine as possible. Try not to lift the machine to get into position. This is a bad habit I had of moving the machine over about six inches by just lifting it. Um, be careful around IVs, ventilators, CPAP machines, chest tubes, and anything else that will cause a nurse to go nuclear on you. Very important. Um, they don't give you a lot of room in these situations where the baby's in an ICU of any kind, and uh, there's a lot of equipment there. So you may have to have the baby moved a little bit, maybe have the baby turned around if it's possible. Um, be very, very careful of, of uh, chest tubes because they put the... Uh, bottom part of the chest tube on the floor and uh, it's very easy to miss when you're walking in. This is old versus new. The machine on the left is an HP, well it's Philips now, um, or it was, um, uh, 5500 and uh, this thing weighed about 550 pounds, very hard to move, extremely heavy and uh, very hard to maneuver at all. The one on the right is the newest technology, which is a V-Scan by GE. This is more of a handheld device that you can put in your lab jacket and make a quick diagnosis. It's probably going to be used mainly by ER doctors and ICU doctors to just get a quick look at something. Um, I'm not sure if they figured out a way to put in the demographics, so until they do that, or if it's done already, then it would be ready for market. Here's some other machines. Um, the one on the left is uh, one of the more common laptop type machines. And it's, this one's an older one, but it's one I could find on the internet, so I put it up there. Um, the top part of the machine will detach and kind of become a laptop, so you can take it to a bedside table in, an, in the ICU and use it without having much trouble. But the cart is very small, so you could also take that. The one in the middle is a Cypress Echo Machine. Um, I actually owned one of these for a while. Um, very solid machine, a lot of penetrating power. Um, very heavy, um, but much easier to put into a room with a bedside table or something of that nature. And on the right is another monster. It's a Philips machine. Um, they've improved them quite a bit. Um, now they have the small flat screen monitor that are much lighter and the machine is smaller so it's easier to use but that was one of the big ones that they came out with that was very hard to use. Alright, get involved in the hospital um, or doctor's choice of a machine. You're the one using it. It's important that you give your input. You're the one pushing the machine around the hospital. Again, your input matters. All tech should be involved in the choice of machines. 
Sometimes you have to play hardball. Be ready for a fight. It's your body at stake. All hospitals should have at least one small laptop-like portable machine. This is very important for going to the ICU, the ER, um, any area where you need to get there and you, you, know, you don't have much space to work. Try to explain to management and the doctors how much easier it will be to maneuver a small machine in the ICUs and multi-bed rooms. It's also important to tell them that there will be less um, techs out with back injuries and uh, it'll be better for the department as a whole. All right, time to get off my high horse. The reason I say that is because uh, pushing these heavy machines around over 33 years, I've pretty much ruined my body. I've had multiple knee replacements because of complications, um, lower back surgery, uh, shoulder surgery, hand surgery, thumb surgery. It's just been a nightmare. So try to protect yourself, please. What's the most common congenital heart defect? That is um, the VSD. It can be mostly in the muscular part of the VS, uh, septum. That's where you'll see most of these. Um, I find that uh, they're pretty easy to pick up because they look like a volcano and uh, very turbulent flow. They're usually pretty small in size, but every once in a while you'll find a bigger one. Um, that is the most common congenital defect, but what's the most common reason you'll be called to do an echo? And that is for a heart murmur. Um, what's normal to see in a newborn? Well, let's think about this. A, no a normal baby is usually born with a PDA, I hope, and uh, the PDA will shunt blood from the aorta after the baby's born to the PA. Um, that usually takes 24 to 48 hours to close. Um, it hopefully will close within that time, but if it doesn't, you'll probably be called to do an echo. Sometimes you'll be even called earlier, which always gets me crazy, but it does happen. Um, should you listen to the baby with a stethoscope? I don't recommend this because uh, Pete's cardiologist, um, you know, have years of experience listening to a baby and even neonatologists do too and they can pick up these murmurs you got to remember that the baby's heart rate is usually somewhere between 130 and 170 beats a minute so it's extremely hard to pick up a murmur um, get nursing input make sure that they give you their input as to what you're doing the echo for um, same thing with the physician see if there's a physician around get the input um, I find that a lot of times the order will come down and it'll say um, murmur on it and then you get up there and you find out that the baby's been in respiratory distress for the whole time and that's why they want the echo so it's important to ask and find out what the real reason is now what you will see most of the time is a PDA it's the most common cause of a murmur it's normal in newborns it usually closes, like I said, between 24 and 48 hours. It's visualized in several views. It causes a machinery type murmur. Most of the time produces continuous flow and may require several follow-up echoes. Views that a PDA can be visualized. There's the short axis aortic view, the long axis PA view, the subcostal short axis and long axis sometimes view, and the aortic arch view. Here's my fantastic artwork. This is a picture of the um, short axis view at the aortic level. Um, you can see all the vessels and chambers there on the right PA and the left PA and the RV alpha tract, RV, tricuspid valve, right atrium. Oh, oops, I forgot to draw in the left atrium. The tricuspid aortic valve. And here on the right, of the screen you see this PDA coming up this is turbulent flow it'll be any shade of red or blue or green or yellow it can be anything it depends upon the color flow settings you have but it'll be very turbulent and usually high velocity like over three meters per second in most cases if it's a smaller PDA the baby was just born it still may be pretty wide open so in that case you won't see that 
All right, this is a PDA long axis view, and uh, this is usually the shot you get. Um, and you can see the turbulent flow running along the PA up here, right by the pulmonic valve. It usually doesn't go that far, obviously. I just kind of got a little crazy with the colored pencils. Um, and uh, it's also a good place because you're pretty parallel to flow for a sample. Um, some doctors ask you to do a pulmonic, I'm sorry, a um, continuous wave and a pulsed wave Doppler. There's no reason to do a pulse wave Doppler. The velocity is going to be over the pulse wave Doppler's Nyquist limit, so there's no reason to do it. Um, get a continuous wave, get a good signal, make sure it's nice and clean, measure it, and then give them that as they're, you know, turning it in. This is a PDA aortic arch view. You can see the arch here and the brachiocephalic vessels, and you can see the turbulent flow going from the um, aortic arch into the PA. So that flow is uh, turbulent too, and sometimes it's visualized um, pretty well in this view. Other times it's a little harder to see, or it might be over a little bit more. It's just you kind of have to fish around for it. So you'll find it though. And here's the PDA anatomy. This is a shot of what the ductus really looks like. Um, so you have your PA here, your aortic arch here, and then the patent ductus right here. So this shows how it shunts flow into the PA. And then of course the rest of the chambers, which you should know by now. Here's some live images of the uh, PDA. This is a long axis view. I just wanted to start off with this one. In a lot of cases, the left ventricle will be enlarged and sometimes the left atrium too from a PDA. So I wanted to show you some pictures of that. It's a pretty nice view, obviously. And this is a drawing of a PDA, kind of in a short axis view. And here is the flow for a PDA. And you can see how turbulent it is. Greens, yellows, blues, reds, whatever color you want to pick, it's in there pretty much. And uh, again, this is the short axis. This is a adult view. I don't know why they put it in here, but maybe just to show the size of the left atrium and left ventricle. And then here's a shot at the aortic arch view level. So this is PA. This is arch coming down here in the blue. You see the blue flow. And there's the ductus right there. So all those views are very important to look at when you're looking for a ductus.